respond to the overwhelming numbers of children aspiring for education. Again, at an aggregate level, there is clearly in most states one teacher for 30 children. It seems like as if you didn't need more teachers. But when you go to a specific school, you find there are about 400 children and only two teachers. How is that? So one will have to not look at state level data at all. One is not to look at even district or block level data. When it comes to right to education, one will have to look at school wise data. It makes no sense to look at aggregated data. A right to education is a right only at a disaggregated level and only when a child enjoys the right every day in his or her life. Even if one day the child does not enjoy the right, then the, the, child, the state has violated the right. So we will have to see how every day the child enjoys the right to education. And for that day when a child is out of school, for that day the state has not met with its obligation to ensure that the child is in school. Now from here I, I'll just come to how I link access to quality of education. Here I think it's important that most often we find that teachers excuse or they say that they're not able to deliver because of overcrowded classrooms. Because uh, they give us many, many reasons for this. Once with the right to education, the system is compelled to step up its supplies. And then it is also compelled to be supportive of its teachers. I think once there is democratization of schools, when all children out of school are in school, when children no longer work, when even migrant children are in schools, when physically disabled children are in schools, when girl children are in schools, when children are no longer in armed conflict, when children are no longer in illegal nexuses of drugs and get into drug addiction, when nothing of this happens, it is then, I think, the teacher has a lot of work to do. <laughs>